for the invitation and the opportunity to speak here. Okay, <clears throat> well, I want to talk by Walter Morita context and relative self control. This is a joint work with uh, Jürgen Fuchs, uh, David uh, Jacklisch, and Christoph Schweiger. Jürgen and Christoph are here, so you can ask all to him. And David, he's a PhD student in, in Hamburg University, and he's uh, finishing soon, so he's an excellent candidate for postdoc. Okay, so <clears throat> let me first try to give the motivation of, of the talk. And for my motivation, I want to start re recalling very quickly about Morita equivalence. But let's start from the beginning, from algebra, ordinary associative algebra. With. So suppose that you have two algebras. The meaning or the definition of the Morita equivalent is that there are possible equivalent definitions, but the idea is that you have an equivalence of categories between the modules, let's say left modules of, of A and left modules of B. And if you have an equivalent, suppose that this is an, a, a, an equivalent of category, then, uh, well, you have a particular object here, let me call this M, and it's the image of the regular module. And this is, of course, something here, so it's an A module. But really, it's a little more than that, no, of course. Because, for example, this is a projective generator of the category. So it has some special properties that it's not too important here, but I, let's say that it's a special object. But the other thing that I really care is the following, because we have that the algebra itself can be seen canonically as the endophontors of the V module. So using this equivalence, we have an isomorphism of algebra of B in the endomorphisms of N. So really, and this is an isomorphism of algebra. So really, M is not just an A module. It's an ABB module, OK, with this uh, particular property. And in fact, you can recover your pointer as is well known in this way. So this model captures, in some sense, the whole information of to have a, a Morita equivalent. So I want to play more or less the same game, but now replacing algebra by finite tensor categories. That's the thing that I, I we what? I mean, this is of course a well developed theory. Uh, I, I just recall it. So <clears throat> suppose now that you have two algebra, two finite tensor categories. And here, the idea is that a tensor category is like a category, ca ca category, categorification of the notion of algebra, no? And, and, and in that sense also, you can also study actions of, of tensor categories on, 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 on other categories. Uh, I won't um, give the full definition, but um, I think uh, in the lectures of, of Dimitri, he explained some parts of, 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 of what is the, the definition. But you can think here, of course, that a module category, it's a category with a bipointer that it's associative up to a natural isomorphism uh, that satisfies some coherence. OK, so the idea here is that you have two uh, tensor categories that I will put some condition to be finite to be easier. And we will say that uh, A and B are Morita, Morita equivalent. If exists, let's say a module, and a module category, an exact module category. And I'm following this idea. And such that uh, let's say B, it's equivalent as a monoidal, as a tensor category with the end of pointers, a linear end of pointers of it. The idea here is to have exactly the same as, as in the algebra case, in the sense that 
really here the category n will have i mean using this equivalence of, of tensor categories m will have a bimodular structure so so m like here the module category will define using the a similar notion that is called the, the lean product uh an equivalence a uh, bi equivalence or a uh, two equivalence between let's say b modules and a modules the details of all these is uh, for example in in the book of uh, finite uh, of tensor categories by uh, Ettinger, uh, Ostrich, Nikšić, Gelatin. So the idea again here is that this capture, I mean, this is something that is captured. If you start with algebra, the notion of Morita, it's something that really is related with something that goes one categorical level up. But you can capture only using an algebraic setting. So something similar happened here. We are interested in, let's say, in to understand uh, when two tensor categories have the same two category of module categories, and you can capture this one in the same level using this notion. I mean, you don't have to go to two categories and you still be in, in, in tensor category world in the, yeah, in the, let's say one dimensional world. So that's why I, I present this definition, but of course this definition in some sense is equivalent to have the other in the same way that to have, I mean, there is a go to go on back between these two notions. And of course, when you have, when you have a, 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 an equivalence relation like Morita equivalence, you could you can be, for example, interested in invariance. And in the algebra settings, a typical invariant is the center of the algebra, because the center of the algebra can be captured, for example, as the natural transformations of the identity pointer of a modules or in other words because you can think of the on the identity pointer as the regular by model as a endomorphisms that are a linear respect to the the action of this or, or in other words um, endomorphisms uh, as by models as a by models okay and so look that we are describing the center of the algebra in terms of something of the category. That's the reason why this is a, a Morita invariant. And you can do, of course, the same thing here. So in, in tensor categories, a very important uh, construction is given by the Drinfeld center. And the Drinfeld center can be defined in, this, in a similar, or not defined, it's equivalent uh in, in a canonical way to 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 this the same kind of construction so it is let's say equivalent as a braided category with the endophontus i will use the same words but i mean really mean endophontus because you can of of a and uh, that again you can look this if you want as as like something like pseudo natural transformations of the identity pointers of a mod. So again, the center, I mean, of course, this, all these require se several proofs that are well known in, in the literature. But the point is that the, the center, then we have that, if we have that A and B are Morita equivalent, then, and I think the first time that I don't know if the first time, but this result is at this in, in two places. Then this implies that the center are equivalent as a braided category. I know this result of this, I mean, in several places, but one is in the in a paper of uh, Peter Schauenbu, and the other is in the a paper of, of Michael Muga. And but the really or something that is more surprising is the following. And that the other direction for finite tensor categories also, it's true. So it's a complete invariant. That's something quite interesting. This is a deep result, a very interesting result of in, in a paper of Ettinger, Nishich, and Austria. 
So the dream flow center, I mean, this is of course, doesn't happen in the case of algebra, but here, at least for finite tensor category, this is something that you have. Okay, so what is the thing that we want to do now? For several applications, for example, for the construction of, of module functors of to rise view invariance or over a check into invariance, we are interested really in some additional structure on A and some additional on the tensor category, the so called pivotal structure. So we would like to repeat part of this story, but now for pivotal and for spherical tensor categories. And in particular, we hope to get something similar to this put in braided, uh, sorry, pivotal in this, in this setting, yes? And, and one thing that I didn't say is that even we have more structures because we have here something like the three categories of tensor categories. So we would like to start in some sense the three categories, pivotal tensor categories, and to understand what, what is all these things. So, <clears throat> So in order to study this, uh, I want to replace part of this equivalence in terms of something that is well known again in, terms, in algebra that is called Morita context. So Morita context is something that in many cases is used in order to, to, to describe Morita equivalence. So <clears throat> just to, to give an idea how we want to go, to, from, from algebra, let's say, I want to first start to describe what is a Morita in algebra, and from this go to Morita context in, in, in tensor categories. So remember again that the idea is that we have two algebras and an equivalence. So when I said an equivalence, of course, we mean two functors. One pointer going in this direction, another pointer going in the other direction. But if you have an equivalence, you can improve your equivalence in order to get an, an adjoint equivalent. So an adjoint equivalent is something a little better, but any equivalence can be, uh, let's say, enhanced in this way. So you have one pointer in this direction that, as I said, this is in some sense captured by a by model. So I will directly write here let's say you have some functor here that is really related directly with a by model and you have another functor in the other direction i will use check and this is related with another functor let me call check for a moment in this way and when you have a, a um, an adjoint equivalent you have a natural isomorphism between what you have a natural isomorphism between this composition here in this case, I am interested again in the case of, of, of uh, equivalence. So here I am assuming that this is an isomorphism, is a natural isomorphism to the identity, in this case of B mod. And also you have a natural composition here. And I will put in the same because this is uh, again an isomorphism to the identity of A mod. And it has to satisfy the typical coherence related with that and adjunction. But look that here, if we, if we look in the other case, I mean, this is the same then in terms of modules to have an isomorphism from this to this as a bimodule, and also to have an isomorphism from here to here as an A module. And again here, I have to put the coherence. And here, the coherence is just, if we look at this as a, kind of multiplication, what we are saying is just that this is associative. So a Morita context will be this thing yeah. too. Yeah. I think check. Oh, thank you. Yes. And it's check. Um, that is associative. Again, yes. So really, this, to be honest, this is something that people call a strong Morita context, but I, I want refer to general Morita context. I, always when I talk about Morita context, it's strong in the sense that these both are isomorphism. Maybe in general, you don't need that this is an isomorphism, but in this case, I will assume that it's an isomorphism. Okay, uh, so, but look that we can, this Morita context, we can put in a slightly 
uh, similar way to say what kind of things we have in this in this notion. Well, really we have uh, something like the following. We have like a category, a linear category with two objects. Let me call this category. One object is zero, another object is one. We have that the, the morphisms between zero and zero are let's say A, the morphisms between one and one are B, and we have an arrow here that corresponds I mean, sorry, the arrows that from zero to one, let's say M, and the arrows from one to zero, M check. And of course, when we said associative, we are saying that we have a, here a category. And let's say that the additional information that we are adding is that those maps are equivalents of Y module or are equivalents. That's, that's enough because, yeah. So we can say that the Morita context is some kind of uh, monoidal, uh, sorry, a category with two objects or k-linear category with two objects, such that these map, these induced maps, are uh, bijectives. That's another way to say. So using this idea, we can go and to give the definition of what a Morita context of finite tensor category is. So, so a Morita context or categorical Morita context will be, I mean, in order to put it, uh, is, uh, let's say a two object, a category, I will call this M, uh, in, in the same way that you have here, that you have a zero and this, so here you have a monoidal category that are the end of, end of the category associated with zero, the career associated with one. Here you have a, mo a module. Here you have another module. And we will ask the following. First, the category associated with zero has to be finite. In this case, I am interested in the case that A and B are finite. And the other is that this and this has to be exact. This is a technical condition. But the point is that uh, this is a by model. So the other condition will be that again, M, the link product, this is the analog to the tensor product there. Uh, yeah, check here. Has to be equivalent uh, through, through the equivalent natural map that is constructed by, by this result to A and the similar for the other. So this is a Morita context. We can, of course, uh, present this explicitly saying that we have a by model, another by model, we have uh, some associativity constraints uh, that this happens. And this is the way that we present in the paper. Uh, but basically, this is a Morita context of, of finite tensor category. Okay. Now the question is how can it be useful to have this Morita context? Oh, oh no. Better. First than this, I will present an example and it will be our main example. And in some sense, it's a unique. Sorry? Where is associativity? Oh, because I'm saying by category. So when I'm saying by category, you have associativity constraints in, 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 in many places. Yeah, but yeah. So. By category means that the one morphisms are exact associative. Yeah, but you also, I'm, I'm saying, I mean, it's basically that you have these two by models, but also that you have some pentagons that that uh, commutes. This is the, the additional part uh, here. Yeah, basically it's the same as to say I have a this model, this tensor category, this tensor category, a by model here, a by model here, and some coherence that it involves. Uh, yeah, that I didn't wanted to write. This is why I present in this way. I mean, in order to do long, not to do longer the definition right now. Okay, so now the example. The example is the following. So take A, a finite tensor category, and M uh, uh, in the composable left, F, left a module category. Then you can take the endophontors, a linear endophontors of M. <clears throat> And then with the opposite 
composition. This is a this is of course a result. Again, this is I, I will denote in this way. This is sometimes called the dual category. Uh, this is this category as this is a finite tensor category, and this category as on on M. This is, I mean, there is the M, I mean, A by definition acts by the left on M, but it, it also acts on the right on this, but basically applying the, the pointer uh, because every object here is a pointer. And, and so this is an A, A star M by module. And the other one will be the pointers from A, to A, again, this, this category naturally up here, and you also can, you can give an, a, a module structure there. And this is a, an A star M, M by module. And this forms a Morita context. Uh, so <clears throat> the result that is a, an analog result to, to, to algebra. In, in algebra, there is a similar result. Says that this, I mean, this says that this, I'm not saying all the whole information, I mean, still the, the that this is a Morita, Samorita context. But more interesting, every Morita context. It's equivalent to one of these four. Can I ask you that? Yes. Is there a difference between AM and AM with the bar? Oh, yes. This, oh, yeah. I, I mean, usually, if we don't put the bar, I'm not reversing the composition as a tensor product. So when I mean the bar, I mean that I am reversing here. Because in our case, it naturally acts not by the, not by the right, but the left. So we really need to, this is a technical point, but yeah. But, it's just that. Okay, and, and the point is that every everything is basically of this form. Okay, but every Morita context up to equivalence or by equivalence. And here equivalence means an equivalence of, of, of by categories because we have a category with two objects. So basically it's that. Okay. So that's why you need strong if you don't need strong. Yeah, I need a strong in for this. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's important. To the, the strong condition. Without the strong condition, this is uh, not true. Okay, but now what what we want to do? Remember that I said pi beta. So <clears throat> now we want to to study dualities for module categories. Let's say, and that's why we. That's the reason why we are intro introducing this notion of Morita context, because here, naturally, we will have the notion of duals. Uh, yeah. So, <clears throat> so we know very well what means to have duals in a monoidal category. So if you have a, a in general, a monoidal category, I won't do everything, but, oh, um, but I want to say about duality in bi categories. In particular, well, what is a, 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 a duality? So suppose that you have a bi category, I would use the letter T. And so associated to every pair of objects in your bi category, let me call this A and B. And uh, if, if you pick an object in this, in the category associated to the two objects, a dual or right dual in this case, will be another object defined at here, plus two, two morphisms, an evaluation that goes from, I, I use again tensor product for the composition of, of one arrows just to mimic what happened in tensor categories. So that's a co-evaluation here. Oh, in the other direction, the wrong direction. That satisfy the, the, the snake. Uh, and the same for the other. 
I mean, it's something that you can define in a bimodal category exactly in the same way, and they really you can repeat the whole construction of to use that this is a, uh, let's say, an structure, and the, the the duals are unique, and you can define left and right, and if you have left and right, it, it's exactly the same. So the result, or one of the results, is that uh, in, in our paper uh, is that. Uh, Morita context, so the bicategory associated, I mean, this bicategory, Morita context of final tensor categories, uh, have uh, left and right duals. Yeah, that's one of one, one result in this direction. Okay, so now we can talk about duals. Uh, look at what happened with duals. So, for example, for this case, we are saying that the dual of M is something that we hear. And the dual of something here is something that, that lives here. And again, the dual, this is the usual one. The dual of something here is something that lives inside here. Because look, here we are changing AB and BA. So that's important. So here we are. Uh, the dual of, of something here is something here, and the dual of something here is something here. But the, the particular interesting for us is that the double dual is something that lives again here. So it's, a, it's something that takes an element in M, and the double dual will be again in M. Yes? Ah, I think I someone was asking. Yeah. Oh, I was I, I was wondering if there's a microphone. I, I can just speak loud. Um have you put in any exactness assumptions on your module category? Yeah, yeah, yes. At the beginning when I would define module category of finite, I, I was assuming that those are exact. Okay. Yes, yes. And particular, yeah. Th this follow also for other considerations because I am assuming that this is strong and this in particular implies directly that it has to be exact. So, yeah. well, I don't want to present the, really the proof of this because of course it's not, it's not the idea, but I, at least I, have, I want to say something to, to have the feeling of what is happening here. And <clears throat> the point is that this proof is directly related with the notion of internal or inner home. That's, that's the point. And, what happened? I mean, I don't want to, to write all the following, but if you have a, a bicategory, you can define the notion of, of inner, let's say left, or uh, there is this notion of closed category. So you can talk about left or right closed. So here you also can talk about inner, inner, in, inner left or right inner. And we can express, and there are good conditions that this kind of bicategory has, we can express uh, the inner homes in terms of duals and vice versa. So the things that we do here is to express for this particular category, the duals in terms of inner homes that we know ex exist by exactness. By exactness, we know that uh, the, the, the what is an inner home? Let's say very, very quickly. So suppose that again, like here, that we have, let's say, a tensor category, like a, a bi category like this. So <clears throat> the idea, again, is suppose that you have two objects. Um, then uh, we want to define something that is uh, the inner home of MN. <clears throat> If you have duals in your category, this is not the direction that we use in the theory, because really what we have here is that from the beginning or from some properties of, of the category, we know that the category has inner homes and inner co-homes. And this is the thing that we use in order to deduce that the category is rigid. But suppose for a moment that this category has uh, dualities, then, there is a typical way to define the inner home. It's basically using, using this, this identity. Uh, and the idea of inner home is that if this is an object, for example, in this case, uh, it will be an object. Uh, uh, in this case, I think is in uh, CAA. And the idea is that this also have, I mean, this is uh, in addition to have an object here, we have a, a natural isomorphism in this home space, a home, 
and uh, this this is the and this bijection is given using exactly the the, the evaluation and the co-evaluation. This is a typical uh, map that you define using evaluation and co-evaluation here. And conversely, if you have in your home, you you can do something that we did in order to express. But for 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 the talk right now, I don't need really concrete formulas for the for the dual. So I, I won't present uh, at this moment to do shorter. But again, the point is that if we have a module category, then we can associate a, a, a Morita context. And in the Morita context, we can talk directly uh, about uh, duals and in particular double duals. And double duals plays an important role in the notion of pivotal because a pivotal structure in a tensor category is a trivialization of the double dual as a tensor functor. So let me go in that direction. So let me present the, the, the other the other character that is a ser functor. This is defined in a paper of Fuchs, Schaumann, and Schaumann uh, Schweiger. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Okay, so suppose that again you have a uh, finite tensor category, and suppose that you have m um, exact in the composable module category. Then uh, write relative uh, set pointer. It's a pointer that goes from M to M that has the plus a natural isomorphism between the inner home of MN and the inner home on NSN for all M and N objects in the module category. This is a, a serif pointer. And the idea is that this serif pointer will place exactly the role of, of, of double dual in, in, I mean, already before our, our paper, I mean, the, the, there exists a notion of pivotal uh, module category, and this is related exactly with the trivialization of this kind of functions. But before, before going to that, let me explain how this is related um, to, <clears throat> Yeah, so, so this is related in the following way. Suppose that you have that A, it's a finite tensor category um, and M, again, a module category in the composable. Then the third pointer is naturally isomorphic to double dual in the, I mean, I have to say the, this, uh, I mean, I am oversimplificating this, but what I want to say is, if you have A and M, you can construct a Morita context. In the Morita context, there is the notion of duals, and the double dual in this Morita context corresponds to the self pointer. One thing that happened, for example, is that you can have here, um, Doing wrong, no. So, for example, you can have results like the following, and this is like a graph for isomorphism uh, for model categories. Oh, the classical graph for theorem relates the fourth power of the antipode in a Hopf algebra and a finite dimensional Hopf algebra with the identity. Uh, using a particular or distinguished uh, group group like object it basically says that the four power of the of the antipode is the conjugation for some uh, particular group like and in in, in in tensor categories there is a result uh, I think it's of Dimitri uh, Ostrich and and Pavel letting go that related with what happens when you take 
the fourth power of the uh, of the dual, and this is naturally isomorphic to the identity. Not not I mean up to conjugation by a distinguished object, it is naturally isomorphic to the identity. So something similar happened here in the sense that uh, the distinguished object. I mean, yeah, the distinguished object of let's say A and AM form, uh, in this case, it's a pseudo natural transformation or isomorphism to be between the identity of the Morita context, I mean, identity of the Morita context associated to the module category and the second, I mean, the square of the set font. When, when we talk about say the natural transformation, this implies in particular some objects inside of the, of the diagonal, let's say. So the, 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 the objects correspond exactly with the distinguished object here and the distinguished object here, or in other words, this natural isomorphism is up to conjugation by the right, by an object here and by the left by an object here. This is basically what is what is happened. And remember that in this case, this corresponds to the fourth power of the right dual. Okay. And now I can I can say something about pivotal because now we have the the, the third pointer or the double dual and. The point here again is that if one if we want to define a pivotal structure, I mean we can define pivotal structure in any possible by category in the, the same way. I mean, suppose that you have T a by category with dualities or with uh, right duals, then we can talk about a pivotal structure. In the same way, it will be like a family of natural isomorphisms. I mean, for every object, let's say, this is a, or for every uh, one arrow, a natural isomorphism between M and M double dual, uh, such that it satisfies the, the, the typical relations. I mean, let's say here is the identity just to, to look as a serialization. Here the canonical isomorphism to this. And here I can use, let's say, P of A tensor M, and here P e of A tensor P of M. So you can define in the same way, let's say, a, what a, a pivotal structure is in a, in a Y category. And uh, the, the result, one result is that. Um, Let me try to, yeah. So, <clears throat> yeah. So the point is that there is already a definition of what a pivotal uh, module category is. This is uh, this is in a paper of Douglas, Schomer, Pais, uh, or no, maybe it's in a paper of, oh, I'm confused. But yeah, but the point is that you can define what um, pivotal uh, module category is in the following way. It's basically uh, a pivotal structure on, let's say an A module category will be a natural isomorphism from the identity of M to the square of the third pointer that satisfied, satisfies by basically this diagram where A lives in the, in the, I'm saying something wrong? No, does it just add? Yes. Ah, thank you. It's not square, yes, yes, of course. Right. Thank you, because I'm thinking in the double dual, so I put the square, double square, but yeah, from the identity to S that satisfies this diagram, but here, the A lives, let's say, in the category A, and M lives in, in, in M. And of course, here I'm replacing double double duals by S 
and similarly here. Yeah, this is basically what's what's happening. Um, and you have to finish some results in this in these directions. Some results, but basically, are, suppose that M is pi, is a pivotal tensor category, a uh, module category. Uh, then, for example, we have that the associated, I mean, uh, by category, uh, it's a pivotal by category. Uh, or the thing that we have is that uh, in this case, the Drinkle center of A and the dual are equivalent as pivotal categories. And if we consider the whole two category of pivotal categories, these two categories have a pivotal structure. And we have that A and B, uh, let's say two pivotal tensor categories are Morita equivalent or pivotal Morita equivalents. If and only if it's a uh, two category of pivotal categories are pivotal equivalent as a by categories. Okay, I think I am on time, so I will just stop here. Comments or questions for Cesar? Um, I, since you did all this theory for pivotal categories specifically, I was wondering if you have in mind some kind of application of this theory for, I don't know, some kind of area where pivotal categories are used, or I know, since it's like very specific this, so. I was no. wondering if you have this in mind. No, no, yes. I mean, mm, part of the motivation of, of, of develop this, uh, as we said, is related to try to understand equivalence between, let's say, fully extended TQFTs. I mean, the idea is that by models, in some sense, should be related to, to equivalence uh, between the associated TQFTs, but you need something else because you, I mean, the Dreamfeld Center captures the, the, the TQFT associated to the fusion category or to the spherical fusion category. Uh, so, so in order to have, let, to, to, to describe, let's say equivalence between the, the, the associated TQFT, you need to describe also by models, but because the spherical structure or the pivotal structure really plays an important role, we need uh, some additional structure. And this is why oh. we were thinking in this. Thank you so much. Thank you. Is the converse of part A true that if the bi, the bi category is pivotal, then the module category is pivotal? We hope so, but at this moment, we don't have a proof really to that, the, the, the converse. Yeah. One more question. I mean, in, uh, it is true, of course, uh, without, uh, yeah, without pivotality, it's a, yeah, mm -hmm. but in the other direction, it's still, I mean, it's not clear how to endow this with the structure of pivotal. So, uh, also, like uh, uh, with pivotal module categories, Shimizu has some result that the internal homes are symmetric for Venus algebras. So do you have, do you think like a general result for pivotal bi categories would be true where that you get that result as a special case? Um, I don't remember. Um, I, I mean, I, I, no, I, 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 I don't, I don't know the, the, the answer, but I, my, my, maybe I'm saying something wrong, but this notion of pivotal category is directly related with the notion of inner, I don't remember exactly what with that with a, a similar notion of of Schaumann. And Schaumann shows that uh, there is uh, 
uh, let's say, Frobenius algebra associated. But directly here, we haven't uh, checked that this is, this is the case. We hope so, but uh, to be honest, we don't know. I mean, the point in some sense is that the notion of Frobenius algebra per se is not categorical in the sense that, uh, yeah, it's not, it's not, it's not, uh, yeah, it's not like a Morita invariance. You need to be like symmetric or something like that. And so in this case, it's not clear for us that really we are capturing this, this, this notion. Yeah. Okay, if there are no more questions, let's thanks Cesar again for the great talk. <laughs>